A couple months ago, we took a look at a new Motorsport Kenwood amplifier, or I should say a group of them. There was two. They were the KAC M. 5024BT and the KAC M5014. And those were awesome little four channel amplifiers that when we dynoed them put out a ton of power. Plus that Bluetooth controller is pretty awesome. But they had an RCA output. And at the time we were kind of like, hmm, I wonder what that's for. We thought it'd be cool to feed one into the other, but we knew there had to be more to the story than they were letting on about. And they were, and that's where we are today. We have the new monoblock, the KAC M5014. 5001. Let's open this thing up and take a look inside and we're going to dyno it and see if this performs as well as his brothers. This is a 200 watt amp at 4 ohm. It's also just like its little brothers, IP67 and IP66, dust and water resistant, as well as salt corrosion resistant. Flipping it over to the back side, we can get even more information about the amplifier, such as the size, which is 7 and 3 16 by 4 and an 8 by 1 and 15 16 It's the exact same size as those two other amplifiers. This will go down to 2 ohms and give you 300 watts. It is a sealed cap aluminum with drain tunnel chassis. It has speaker level inputs and signal sense turn on. Wired remote level control that is IPX6 water resistant and UV resistance and of course a base boost from 0 to 18 dBs variable between 40, 60 and 80 hertz. Let's open this thing up and take a look. Inside the box you'll find the instruction manual with the screws for the base knob and a rogue zip tie. Inside this big cardboard colored box you find the base knob. Ooh, look at that end. Wow, that's pretty hardcore. And the base knob is sealed. Yeah, it does not come apart. Pull the head off. It looks like you have a little bit more than a quarter of an inch to mount this through something. There's rubber on the back side of the base knob and it's really tight. And here it is looking all sharp. If you notice, it has all the wires coming out of the end of it here. And that is for its waterproofing. The only way to do it and keep it sealed is to make a wired end. If we follow it all the way down, we find our 10 gauge ground, our 10 gauge power. Inside of the fuse holder, it does have a 40 amp fuse. There are two woofer negatives, which are black with a white stripe. Two woofer positives, which are both black, has the RCA input here. Remote turn on is blue with a white stripe. And then the end for the subwoofer volume control. And if you notice, it has this cap on it. That means if you don't want to use it, make sure to leave the cap on so you don't get any water or corrosion inside of it. Make sure to take it off if you're going to use it. And there is a simple clip here that you push down. On the side of the amplifier, you'll see what looks like the controls. They're not. They're hiding behind this. This is a rubber gasket all around here with these three screws holding it in place. They've silk screened it so that you know where they're at when looking for them as opposed to just making it invisible. Now be careful when taking the screws off because there is a washer. You do not want to lose it. If you look closely at this end, you'll see there's an arrow and a little pull tab. This is really hard to get up otherwise. Input sensitivity is between 5 and and 0.2 volts. Base boost selectable frequency is these di is this dip switch down here, 60, 40, 60, 80, and your low pass crossover. Looking at the other side of the amplifier, there are no controls or anything here. And if we take a closer look at the end plate, we can see this giant connector here that goes directly into the amplifier. This is metal and screwed in nice and tight. And on the bottom, the feet are spaced up off of the amplifier to give it a gap underneath so that if there is any moisture, it will flow underneath the amplifier without going inside of it. However, I can see that there is a gasket here, but don't worry, we're gonna take this off and take a look inside. And yes, this is a sample and not for resale. This is a pre-production model that we have the benefit of playing with and sharing with you guys. Now there is one screw here that has a washer on it, so be careful and don't lose it if you're deciding to do something like this, which I don't recommend. Getting close up inside the amplifier, we can see that it has two circuit boards. It has the shielded power supplies here. The power and ground are screwed into the circuit board. The speakers are done with a clip. Here's the rubber gasket we were talking about. It's a very clean, simple looking amplifier that is designed to put out bass. So enjoy looking at this. But while you're thinking about that, I'm going to be getting this over to the amp dyno so we'd see what kind of real world power this thing does. First test up, 
certified dyno run at four ohms. 227 watts at four ohms. Next test is a certified dyno run at two ohms. 322 watts. Uncertified dyno run at four ohms. 233 watts. Uncertified at two ohms. Wow, it just crawled up at the very last minute there to 362 watts. Dynamic burst mode, four ohms. 232 watts. Last test, dynamic burst into 2 ohms with a 367 watts at 2 ohms. Well there you have it guys. This thing just like its brothers is a workhorse of an amplifier at a compact size. If you have something small that you want loud, definitely check out this line of Kenwood amplifiers. You will not be disappointed. Thank you for watching as always. You guys have a great night. We'll see you there next time. Bye.